Welcome back to the Brahmin Word, and Isaac has arrived, and we are going to, uh, on Thursday, we are going to one of the most infamous passages about Isaac in Genesis chapter 22, but today we are going to wrap up what seems like a little bit of a side story with Abraham at the end of chapter 21, but I think it picks up well with uh, the birth of Isaac and then the infamous, uh, almost sacrifice passage of Isaac. Um, so we will go there. So turn with me to Genesis chapter 21 verses 22 through 34 or the end of chapter 21. So Genesis chapter 21 verse 22. At that time, Abimelech and Phicol, the commander of his army, said to Abraham, God is with you in all that you do. So first off, it's possible that this Abimelech is maybe from somewhere else. But I think, based on what I have seen um, from uh, other sources, and then, two, how he describes his relationship with Abraham in verse 23, which we'll get to in a second, I think that it's a good chance that the Abimelech scene here is the same as the Abimelech scene in chapter 20 because of how well, even after Abraham tries to pull this kind of stunt with Sarah, um, where he basically lies about who she is to cover his own self. Basically, I think based on the fact that Abimelech allowed them to stay in his region of influence. I think it's very possible that these are the same people here. So with that being said, it's really, really cool to see that he said that he calls Abraham, God is with you in all that you do. But yet at the same time, he does bring up a little bit about the past that they have. Verse 23, Now therefore swear to me here by God that you will not deal falsely with me or with my descendants or with my posterity. But as I have dealt kindly with you, so you will deal with me and with the land uh, where you have sojourned. And Abraham said, I will swear. So... There's this treaty slash covenant between these two uh, here that then takes on a different level here in just a second. But I think it's interesting to see how he starts describing Abraham and then how he finishes it. So he starts with saying, look, I know that you are a follower of God. That much is clear. And God is with you in all that you do, according to the end of verse 22. But then you have this call back to the actions taken by Abraham in chapter 20 in verse 23. He says, look, um, yeah, the whole thing where you dealt falsely with me, um, I don't want you to do that anymore. Uh, and remember how I dealt kindly with you. I didn't have to keep you in the country. I could have kicked you out. Uh, and I also gave you belong uh, possessions as well. And if you remember from, from chapter 12, um, uh, where Abraham and Pharaoh, um, Yes, there are possessions that are given to Abraham, but really Pharaoh's just wanting him to get out. <laughs> um, whereas here, Abimelech in chapter 20 allows them to stay in the country. And now granted, it could be that he's thinking of a financial gain uh, from partnering with Abraham, possibly. Um, but I think he's mainly thinking, well, look, there's something about this guy Um that he clearly has a God on his side. Now, again, my guess is that Abimelech is not a follower of the Lord. Um, so he's just basically trying to get on Abraham's good side and his, Abraham's God's good side. I think that's what's going on here. Um, and that does seem to be the case, but then there is something that comes up uh, between them. So verse 25 when Abraham reproved, or basically called out, um, 
Abimelech about a well of water that Abimelech's servants had seized. Abimelech said, I do not know who has done this thing. You did not tell me, and I have not heard of it until today. So there is this well of water uh, that was Abraham's, um, and Abimelech's servants had seized it. So you could be thinking, okay, is the treaty done? Is the covenant broken uh, because of the actions of these servants? But Abimelech makes it very, very clear, I have no clue what's going on. Uh, so my guess is that these servants just went rogue. Basically, <laughs> these servants did this out of their own volition and out of their own heart. Um, and so Abraham uh, decides to take this as uh, as true, and he sets up a uh, covenant between them in verse 27. So Abraham took sheep and oxen and gave them to Abimelech, and the two men made a covenant. But then he adds to this in verse 28. Abraham set seven ewe lambs of the flock apart. And Abimelech said to Abraham, what is the meaning of these seven ewe lambs that you have set apart? So I think the the setting apart of the ewe lambs, I think that's part of the gift that's mentioned in 27. I don't think it's an extra uh, part of it. I think it's it's uh, it's a part of the whole entire gift as a whole um, to make this covenant between these two. So... What is the purpose of setting these apart, though? Verse 30. Abraham said, These seven ewe lambs you will take from my hand, that this may be a witness for me that I dug this well. Basically, Abraham is showing that, look, I believe that you have nothing to do with us. And so I am willing to uh, show in good faith that I trust your word. Um, so I'm giving this to you as a... Um, yeah, as a, as a show of good faith. I trust that you had nothing to do with this. Um, uh, and then it goes a little bit even further that these two men have come together finally, even after the lies of Abraham in, in chapter 20, and then this, again, possibly rogue servants of Abimelech that make this mistake in chapter 21. Um, there's still this covenant that comes between these two men. Verse 31, Therefore, that place was called Beersheba because there both of them swore an oath. And Beersheba means uh, well of seven, which I think is interesting because of the seven ewe lambs, right? Um, or, well, the oath. I think, too, the reason why Abraham picks seven is to show the completeness because the number seven in ancient Near Eastern times, uh, especially in Hebrew circles, meant um, completion. And so I do believe that that is why he picked seven instead of eight, nine, ten, whatever. I, I think that's why he picked that number specifically uh, to show the completion of the covenant between those two. Um, but yeah, so they make this covenant at Beersheba. Uh, Beersheba, sorry. Verse 32. So they made a covenant at Beersheba. Then Abimelech and Phicol, the commander of his army, rose up and returned to the land of the Philistines. So we get a little bit more information on, um, on Abimelech and the fact that he is from the land of the Philistines. Um, which is really, really fascinating because... The word Philistines, the name Philistines, brings up David and Goliath. And so you know that eventually the Philistines will turn on Israel. But as of right now, uh, the founder of Israel and this king of the land of the Philistines are getting along really, really well, which I find interesting. Verse 33, Abraham planted a tamarisk tree in Beersheba and called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. Why did he plant a tree? Uh, it, I think it is, again, a sign of the covenant between the two men. Um, but I also think it is also setting up a reminder uh, for Abraham and for Abraham's kindred the not just the covenant between abimelech and abraham but i think ultimately um the 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 reminder of the 
goodness and the protection uh, that the Lord provides. Uh, because again, it says that at this tamarisk tree in Beersheba, Abraham called on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God, which we have seen before. And part of that calling out is worship, but also a sacrifice too. So it's just another way to remind Abraham of the goodness of the Lord, I think. Uh, and then Abraham sojourned many days in the land of the Philistines. And so it's just this fascinating little side story. But you're, you maybe think, okay, well, what's the point? I mean, uh, it doesn't have anything to do with Isaac, which is the birth of Isaac in chapter 21, verses 1 through 21. And then you have the sacrifice or the near sacrifice of Isaac in chapter 22, which we'll look at on Thursday. So what's the side story even about? Well, I think it's wrapping up chapter 20, for sure. I think it's definitely wrapping up chapter 20. But then, too, I think it's showing the protection uh, that the Lord brings uh, to his children, which, of course, is seen in the birth of Isaac, because you have, uh, you have the promise of the Lord uh, to give Abraham a child, finally come to fruition. Yes, there is Hagar and Ishmael, but the, the, the son of promise finally comes in, at, the, at the beginning of chapter 21. But then you see the protection of the Lord uh, for Abraham and Isaac in chapter 22. So I think it's starting to set this precedent of the protective side of the Lord for his children. Uh, because here you don't really see God's dialogue which you see and in the first part of 21 and all throughout 22, you don't really see here at the end of 21. And I think it's because he's trying to show that he is the protector of his children, of you and I as sons and daughters of God. I think that's why this side story is, yeah, it may look off on the surface, uh, but I think it definitely... Uh, it's a cool little middle ground between the promise uh, fulfilled with the birth of Isaac and the protection of the Lord in chapter 22, uh, in chapter 22 towards Abraham and Isaac that we will see on Thursday. Definitely am excited about chapter 22, and so I'll see you on Thursday as we go through the almost sacrifice of Isaac. I'll see you then.